Cheers. Who's been a naughty boy then? Who's a naughty boy? Here's another fine mess you got into, Stanley. What's wrong? What do you say, uh, they was, Stan, eh? I don't know. I've never seen them before. We don't care if you haven't seen them. We want to know what they are. Well, they're magazines, aren't they? You'll start up a tent. Go on. G go on where? You know what he's bleeding on about, Stan. Tell us what magazines they are. The lady? And, uh, think about it, bonus question. Country life. Spot on, Stanley. Can't fault it. Ten out of ten. Stanley Quayle from West Hampstead, reading The Lady and Country Life. Mr. Grantley, don't reckon the lady, Stan. He isn't exactly head over heels with Country Life. Look, I don't know nothing about them, honest. You say you don't know nothing about them? You had 200 weight of them on the back of your lorry. Country Life's ladies, National Geographicals. You even had some beanos and dandies mixed up with them. Mr. Grantley don't pay you wages to go down to Dover and come back with beanos and bleeding dandies, does he? Going somewhere? Uh, only the cars here. I'm busting for a Jimmy Riddle. That's nerves, that is, Stan. Go on. off somewhere, Stan. No. Well, I wouldn't, not if I was you, but before you tell me where those two other packing cases are. Look, I wasn't lying. I don't know nothing about it. Where are they, Stan? I'm honest, I swear. Oh! 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 Where are they? Oh! Well, I suppose if you can't, you can't. That's all there is to it, isn't it? Yeah, well, I'd... No, all right, all right. Yeah, I'll give you a ring next week sometime then, shall I? Yeah, cheers. Have a nice night. Yeah. Just been given a bleed now, haven't I? Oh, you can't win them all. I'd like to win a couple now and again. What's that? Oh. God, what a life. <laughs> <laughs> You'd think his VAT man just had a heart attack, wouldn't you? Oh, it's a big day tomorrow. Yeah. Wedding bells for Arthur's niece. This is a colleague of mine, Darrell. Did you get an invite? No, no, I'm keeping a low profile. Don't want one of those, no thanks. Here we are. That's the mug. Poor side doesn't look as though he's going in him, does he? Are you sure you're not on the official guest list? I'm absolutely positive. Surely his dibs has rode you in for some simple little job. Terry! Have a word, my son. <laughs> I wouldn't count your chickens, Terry. Here, bring a drink over. What do you want? Lager. The usual for me. The usual for him. I'll have another one of these. Right. You, know, you can have this one. I ain't be touched. And there you are. Uh, this is a lucky lad who's got it all to do tomorrow, Terry. Darrell Emsworth? Terry. Terry McCann. Mr. Daly's been telling me. Terry's solid gold. 24 carat, right through. Uh, Mr. Daly, can you tell me where to find the toilet? Well, there's nothing out of order, son, is there? You feeling a bit Uncle Dick? Oh, oh, no, no. I just want to use the toilet. Oh, well, that's all right, then. Yeah, through there, by the curtain. Oh, right. There you are. There we go. Nice, lad. Well, looking forward to the more, Terry? Mm, yeah, yeah. We nicked a point off them at home, you know. Could get through tomorrow. <laughs> the wedding, Burke. Someone getting married? <laughs> Daryl's wedding. Daryl and Finn. Oh, my God. Don't say the GPO's cocked it up again. Your invite is stuck in a post somewhere. No. Yeah. Oh. oh Still, not to worry, eh? I mean, I was never very good at those big occasions, you know, chit-chat speeches and all that. I'd be better off down with the chaps at Craven Cottage. What, and let my little Trina down? Eh? What, 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 what is my little Trina going to say if she thinks on the most important day of her life, you are giving her a blank? I don't even know her. Not personally, no. But you have heard me talk about her. When? Just now. What about Daryl? What about Daryl? 
Oh, I've been singing your praises to him all the way from the station. Do leave it out, Arthur. No, 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 no. Leave nothing out, Terry. He is relying on you. Hey. And me. And you will be doing me a favour, which which you owe me, and enjoying yourself. I mean, that can't be bad, can it? Doing what? Spending a ten spot. Oh. What, you mean you're going to give me a tenner to spend? Terry, this is stag night, ain't it? I mean, I was going to show him the bright lights myself, like this big business deal cropped up. No, Arthur, right, look, are you suggesting that I'm going to take... No, no, no say... Terry, Terry, every man is entitled to his stag night. Mm -hmm. It's like a condemned man's hearty breakfast. Oh, my, my, my stag night was a cork, I'll never forget it. I ended up, I ended up at three o'clock in the morning. Oops. Oh, never mind where I ended up. But the point is, I don't want Daryl turning up at the church in the condition I turned up in. Her indoors has never forgiven me. After all these years, it still rankles. So you, t oh no, you 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 look after Daryl tonight, eh? Where's your drink? Oh, it's over there, Mr. Daryl. Oi, it's Friday, isn't it? Yes, it's Saturday tomorrow. Yeah, I've got to make phone calls, I've got to arrange to meet people, you know what happens on Friday nights. I mean, the good Lord did not put me on earth to be a nursemaid, did he? Oh, no, Terence, Terence, please do not let us bring him into the argument. The good Lord created us all in, in, his, in his own image, right? And then he dotted your card, as he dotted all our cards. But he dotted your card, mind her. And that is your role for the night. Daryl minded. Where am I supposed to take him? Well, just see, he enjoys himself. Uh, within moderation. You know, drink, yeah. Nightclub, yeah. Dodgy saunas and massage two floors up, ring bell and wait, is definitely off the menu. Oh. And you expect me to do that with a tenner? Nah, it's a score or nothing. Oh, no, 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 Terry, I'm sorry. 25 is absolute top. Right, done. 25, good deal. Thank you very much. Eh? 25. Oh, all right, then. You know, I'm, I'm going to have to love you and leave you now. Here you are, Father. Dave, you're not coming dressed like that, are you? Don't worry, I've got all the gear. Oh, good. All right for some? No, 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 25, right? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Take care, Dara. Oi, where's, where's he stopping? Stop, Joel, didn't I mention? Be all right if he crashes down at your place tonight? I've only got one bed. No, that'll be no trouble. I mean, it would be more convenient if he kept to your gaff tonight, because when you're on the shuttle in the morning. Is there something else you've forgotten to mention? No, 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 Terry, Terry, I assume you will be picking up the bride and groom and dropping them down. Oh, no, no, no. Saturday, innit? Yeah. Yeah, well, Saturday's football, innit? But, Terry, how, how, how are they going to get there? Well, I don't know, get them a minicab. Minicab? Hmm. Terry. Her indoors is all set on society wedding. She goes spare if they turn up in a minicab. And look, I've, I've got a princess all laid on. Terry, t t Terry, Terry. Oh, go on then, good boy. I'll bring the motor round in the morning. Right. See, see, he gets his beauty sleep. Yes, sir. Uh, where are we going then, Terry? Where'd you fancy? I don't mind, up to you. But can we go on underground? I like underground. Hello. Hello, Rich. Oh, God, Strip, you did not make me jump over. I'm on my own. Wasn't expecting the phone to ring. Yeah, sorry, Reg. Sorry to bail you tonight, but I thought I'd better check that the deal's still on. As you see, it'd be difficult to ring tomorrow. I've got a wedding in the family. Yeah, of course it's on. I don't go back. Every word off, you know me. If I say I do a thing, I do it, son. <coughs> Hang about a second, Arthur. Anybody about? 
Rich. Hello, Rich. Stone me, it's him again. Who? Oh. You know, that bleeding bent copper, innit? What's his name? I don't know. Yes, you do. That's Ashmore. No. Not little Mr. Sticky Fingers back in his antics. That's all we need. We have enough problems without bent filth. Arthur? Everything OK? Yeah, of course everything's OK. Why shouldn't it be? Hey, listen, listen, these uh, goods that you're knocking out for me, they're not dodgy, are they? Of course they're not dodgy. I've already told you, Art, but they fall off the back of this lorry regularly. Look, they're ready for you now. Question of how soon you can call and collect them, innit? Tomorrow morning, sir? Ah, ah, now, look, that is the one day I'm lumbered, Reg. See, I can't do it tomorrow because I've got this family wedding. You'll have to make up your mind what comes first, business or pleasure. Of course, it's tomorrow or not at all. Question a quick turnover in that game. If you can't pick them up tomorrow, I've got other customers who can, old son. What do you think? How to get the coffin in? Well, never mind the fun. That is a very valuable vintage limo. It's got a very distinguished history. Yeah, history is the operative word, isn't it? I've seen it, I'll tell you, not. You haven't. Yeah. Laurel Nardi were driving it. Going jogging? No, I'm not going jogging. I've been sleeping on a bleeding sofa and it's freezing. It's got to be early, isn't it? What time is it? Well, it's not that early. It must be all at seven o'clock. Seven? Or oh, something like that. Up by six type of thing. Up by six? What's your game? Well, I brought a limo around, didn't I? Yeah, but the wedding marks don't kick off till 11.15, does it? Oh, no, no. But I thought I might beg a favour of you before the off. What sort of favour? da da Leave off. I'm not wearing that. But it's a church wedding, Terry, with a proper vicar and an organist. I mean, a chauffeur's hat would look right. Well, let him wear it, then. I oh, know, Terry, please. Get off! No, I don't care if it's Westminster Abbey and the Archbishop of Canterbury refereeing. I'm not wearing that. Put it back. So what's this favour? Oh, I just want you to pick up some books I've bought. Books? Yeah. I don't suppose it occurred to you to put the kettle on, did it? Come on. It's half past six. What's wrong with you getting your own book? Shh. Keep him well, ain't he? Hey, you didn't get him legless, did you? We weren't charging around the flesh pots till the early hours. It's a killer, that one, you know. What? Up west, on the underground, cheeseburger, chips, half a lager, down Shaftesbury Avenue and round and round Piccadilly Circus. What for? He wanted to see the lights. Oh, well, then you have a little bit of change for me, won't you? What I was saying was, why can't you collect the books yourself? Oh, be reasonable, Terry. What, a day like I've got? I mean, that's why I've come to you at the crack of dawn. I mean, I'll never be able to get out again once Sir Indoors has woken up. Uh, uh, no cigars, not this time of day. Oh, my God. It'll be bedlam at home at nine o'clock. All the relations we're bedding and breakfasting, they're all over the place. I mean... Where am I supposed to learn my speech? My heart bleeds for you, Arthur. Well, they're not all my relations, you know. Most of them are hers. Uh, all right, what are these books? Books? We're writing in. For reading. Yeah, look, take the limo. Make it a round trip. Bung the books in the boot. Here you are. I've done your itinerary. Watford? No, 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 no. This side of Watford. I mean, it's only a stone's throw out of your way. Trina's Muswell Hill. Well, 
Look, all right, I agreed to shunt the bride and groom, right? I did not agree to do a round Britain rally. Oh, come on, Terry. I've done all the hard graft for you. Look, I've worked out a room. Not read it. Go on, read that. Time of departure, 0730 hours. Proceed to Watford. Time of arrival, Watford, 0815. Fifteen? Three quarters of an hour from here to Watford? Well, Saturday morning, half past seven. You're doddling. Right, pick up books. Uh, pick up books, TOD Watford, 0830. Return to base, TOA here. 0915, drop off literature, pick up groom. TOD, 0940. And that gives you ten minutes for a cup of tea. Oh, that's bleeding kind of you. Well, that's all right. Yeah, you drop Daryl off at my place at ten to ten. Put your foot down, order back doubles. Might as well in no time. Pick up Trina, 10.30. Gives you all the time in the world to get to St Thomas's for 11.15. I'll see you there. I suppose you don't want me to drop into a car wash on the way? Mm. No, I don't do that. You ruin the white ribbon. You're being sarcastic, aren't you? Listen, this place in Watford, what is it, a bookshop? Well, no, 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 it's not exactly a bookshop as such. Well, what is it exactly as such? Mm. More your marriage guidance, you know, sort of um, marital aids establishment. Marital aids? A sex shop? You mean they're porno books? Terry, of course they're not porno. Bit of fruity, yes. Well, why can't the geezer who owns the shop knock them out? Because he don't deal much in books. He sells thingies, you know. I mean, he is holding these few books that came off the back of a lorry. Oh, this gets better and better, doesn't it? Not only are they porno books, now they're bent porno books. Oh, I'll trust you to get the wrong end of the stick. Look, there are these few books, what this man wants to get shot of. I have Soho contacts. It'll be a quick turnover job. I'll be rid of them by tomorrow morning. You make sure you are, because I'm not driving around with them for the rest of... Oh, morning, Mr Daly. Morning, Terry. Hi, mate. Morning, Daryl. Sorry, did uh, Terry wake you up? Well, this is the day, my son. Live every second of it, eh? How'd you like to start with a nice cooked breakfast? Oh. Terry, here's a dab hand to fry up. Do what? Oh, yeah. No, no. Perhaps on second thoughts, better not. Don't want you going down with heartburn, do we? No. He never said nothing to me about not picking them up himself. Well, did he mention a wedding? Yeah. Yeah, he did say something, but he didn't say nothing about no Terry picking up his goods. Well, could you try ringing him? I've tried him twice. It's always engaged. Yeah, that's Arthur. I was trying to find out where I am, ringing you while you're ringing him. Listen, and I've got to take this bird to the church, right? The bride. Now, if we don't hurry up, she's going to end up thumbing it, isn't she? Have you got any proof you're working with Arthur Daly? Yeah, yeah, look. Look at that bleeding motor. Of course I'm working for Arthur Daly. You don't think I'd drive a heap like that for fun, do you? I'll tell you what. Drive it round the back, right? First left, then left again, and Raymond can load it up. But you do not drive it away from here until I've had a word with him, OK? Yeah, that's fair enough, yeah. Just let's get moving, eh? Follow him. He's following the geezer in that tied up banger. We're following him. Poses. It's not the bridesmaids' poses I'm ringing up to complain about. It's the individual carnation buttonholes. It's not shooting those balls all over the place. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Just uh, clarifying a few points to my lady wife. Now, uh, getting back to the non-arrival of... Oh, oh, please. I'm sorry. Getting back to the non-arrival of the individual carnation buttonholes. Now, you promised me faithfully they would be here no later... They are... Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, where was I? Yes, yes. Oh, they are? Oh, can I have your definite assurance on that fact? Oh, I'm very much obliged to you, madam. Thank you. I hope yours is equally enjoyable. Oi! No chocolate milk in that front bedroom. That has been designated a no-go area to kiss. The ladies' coat room, full of fur coats. Don't want you sopping chocolate milk all over the place. Arthur? What? Telephone. I know he said telephone, you stupid in-law. Daily residence? Yes, Reg. Terry, 
Is he still with him? He should be halfway to Muswell Hill by now, according to the itinerary. I know, I know, but I wasn't to know that, was I, Arthur? For all I know, it could have been anybody. It's Terry, Reggie. Didn't you know he worked for me? Oh, well, don't go on, Arthur. He's leaving now. He's way beyond schedule already. I mean, now, now. As soon as you stop rabbiting on, put the phone down. Tell him to get a move on. Oh, oh, oh. oh. What's all this? What, well, Arthur asked me to get for him? No, 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 no. No, it should have all been stacked in a boot. He has stacked up the boot. Wouldn't all go in. But they're supposed to be books. They are books. They're not the magazines. Same difference. God. Oh, my God, that's disgusting. Magazines are books. It's all something to read. <laughs> or look at. No, look, look. This is a wedding motor, isn't it? I'm supposed to be taking the blushing bride to the church. And she will have something to blush about. She cops an eyeful of one of these, won't she? No, 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 look, look, you'll have to unload them. Look, that motor was loaded up on Arthur's instructions, and if Arthur wants it unloaded, then Arthur can unload it himself. Uh, all right, can I use your phone? Be my guest. I don't want them. They're Arthur's books, bought and paid for. You can't unload them here. Just open the doors, will you? Look at these papers, money. First editions of Lady Charlie. Autographed copies of the Karma Sutra. Hang about, no worry. I'll find out where they're going. We'll pick them up again later. Oh, excuse me, Reggie Reynolds, is it? Who wants him? Oh, friend of Stan, Stan the lorry driver. Wants to see you, Reggie. What about? Where is he? Oh, God. Don't say you haven't heard he's in the hospital. The hospital? What's wrong with him? He's had to have all his face stitched. He was in this accident. Accident? What sort of accident? A driving accident? Did something hit him? That's right, Reggie. Something hit him. Me. <laughs> I should get back behind your counter, Sonny, if I was you. This ain't any of your business, is it? And oi! I wouldn't go doing anything stupid like trying to phone the law. Know what I mean? Smashing. We understand each other, then. Now, piss off. I said I sent a car to pick up the Shelley, but I haven't had a car to send, have I? I am not made of cars, contrary to popular belief. I'll bring their little necks for You see what it is, Beatrice? We don't know what it is. If we knew what it was, I could shift it for you. It's chocolate milk. I said they shouldn't be allowed to slop it about. They should drink it in the kitchen, over the sink. If it's milk, it's fat. It's a proper cleaning job. I wouldn't like to attempt it. I'll do more than wring their necks. I'll crucify the little swines. <laughs> Daily residence. Terry? What do you mean you won't have time to pick up the bridegroom? You should have picked him up already. Where are you? No, no it's a traffic. It's murder, right? Never mind, don't tell me now. Listen, revise the itinerary. You do the bride, I'll get young Mick to pick up Daryl, drop him at the church, and then double back here for the sherry. And he can squeeze a couple of her sisters in as well. Just a minute, Terry. Yes, Graham? You don't happen to have a collar stud about the premises, do you? Collar stud? Collar studs went out with Clement Attlee. I have not seen a collar stud since 1947. Oh, look, I'll have to wear my other shirt. I told you you wouldn't have one. I don't care what he's got. You're not walking in that church in a top hat and 
a woolly shirt. Very it's not only on her best coat, it's Terry. all over your fitted carpet. Yeah, well, that'll be all over my fitted carpet if it is. Listen, Terry, you can still do it a Muzz Willie old pickup, yes? I suppose so, of course, yeah. Listen, mate, it's those books, right? Never mind about that. If you can do it a bribe, Don't we're in with a chance. Don't walk on the carpet until I've been in. Listen, did I mention the sherry? No, will somebody please answer the front door? I'm on the telephone. It, it looked just I've a second, I've done what Terry. I can for the carpet, Arthur, but who only knows how you'll clean the wall? You're all deaf or something in this place! Uh, excuse me. Listen, love, it's all right. That's mine. I'll be out in a minute. All right? Sorry, Arthur. What we... Arthur? Oi! Arthur! Terry, look. T Terry? Terry? Oh, my God. You look a picture. Don't worry, love. It must be on its way. If there were any major hang-ups, he'd have given us a ring. It's all very well you saying don't worry, Dad. It's not your wedding. Where do you think it's got to? I've told you. It's on its way. If it's down to your Uncle Arthur to send a vehicle, he'll send a vehicle. Better late than never. There's a limo with its ribbons up, pulling up outside now. Transport for the bride? Yeah, that's right, Chief. You better wheel her out. I'm running a bit behind time. Have you got room? Oh, yeah, there's stacks of room. As long as you don't mind sitting in the front with me. But where do I fit in? You? Why? Who are you? I'm Mr. Ellaby. I'm the father of the bride. Well, nobody said anything about taking the father of the bride. It's been an oversight, then, because the bride's father always journeys with the bride. Always. It's traditional. Look, just tell her to keep calm, right? I'll shuffle things about. But don't panic, that's all, and uh, I promise I'll get you there on time, all right? We'd be extremely grateful. Yeah. Did anyone say anything about two crates of medium sweet sherry? Oh, cheers. Bride or groom's side? I'm neutral. Friend or relative of the bride or groom? I am the bride's uncle's business associate. Oh, um, either side. Business associate? Not many. Come on. Wonderful. Won't be long now, if the lights stay with us. Oh, uh, they won't be going into church with us. <laughs> They'll be going on to the reception. And they're to toast the uh, health of the bride and groom. We're having a sparkling rosé at the luncheon, uh, but that's arriving with the caterers. Terrific.
we took your time. Oh, no, 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 oh. Oh, Goodness. You see to them, I'll see to them, Mr. Ray. Arthur! Sorry about the sherry, Malcolm. How's my little Trina? Give you a comfortable ride, didn't she? Like being on a magic carpet sitting back in one of these, isn't it? I know these books are yours. They're all magazines, aren't they? Bleeding thousands of them. That's disgusting. And that's what I said. It's not physically possible. Is it? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah, we'll get rid of them. Rid of them where? I don't know. Find somewhere at the stash and pro temps. Take them round to your place. What, in 20 minutes? Listen, according to your itinerary, it's 11.30 TOD, right? Right. Get the bride and groom taken to the reception at the Burkdale rooms, right? Right. TOA, 12.50 hours. Right. right. Well, that isn't humanly possible, is it? And there's another fly in the ointment. Is the old Bill on the official guest list, or is he a bona fide gatecrasher? Detective Constable Ashmore? What's his caper? He's been following me since Watford. Why? What you been up to? Nothing. Well, no advice. So it can't be nothing to do with me. No, 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 no. There's nothing wrong in good, clean porn. We're living in a liberated, democratic society. Oh, well. Supposed to be? Get shot of it. And where's your tie? CID. Terry? Yeah? I was a mate of yours here. Uh, Reggie wants a word. Reggie is? Yeah. He's in the back. I'll just look after these, all right? Excuse me. Pardon. Sorry. Excuse me. Many thanks. Morning, Mr. Daly. Unexpected honour, isn't it? I wondered if I might have a word. Leave it out. It's a bit inopportune. Side or the groom side. Get in, smart ass. One of your friends wants to talk to you. Bit of a hard bastard, are you? I've been known to go a bit. Perhaps we have a few group shots now, eh? Uh, yeah, immediate relatives and family. Yeah. I mean, that is immediate relatives and family of the bride and uh, groom. Uh, Daryl's mum and dad, over by the uh, groom. Malcolm, Malcolm, the dear ladies, over by the uh, bride. Uh, Graham, Graham, over there with uh, Maud. And uh, Beatty and uh, Detective Constable Ashmore. 
No, 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 carry on. The... I don't know what you want, Mr Ashmole, but if you are immediate family, I'm filing for divorce. I'm trying to contain my patience, Mr Daly, which, under the present circumstances, I'm finding very difficult. I'm still waiting to have a word. What, now? Now! That heart is my niece's wedding. Can't it wait till after the reception? If I get on the blower, Mr Daly, which I'm of a mind to do, there'll be a squad of cars converging on this church from all points of the compass. Your niece, her hubby, and the rest of these good people will be continuing the festivities down the nick. What am I going to tell them? Tell them anything you like. But you and me go on off to have a chat, all right? All right, come on. Uh, won't, won't be a moment, there's been a slight uh, hiccup over flight departures. Uh, this gentleman's from the travel agency. Carry on, Dave. Yeah. You got all the photos you want? Right then, Mr Daly. Now, look, don't you write that Mr Daly me, Mr Ashmore. For starters, you can explain what right you have, or think you have, to arrest me in front of my immediate family and friends. And you better have a just cause, Mr Ashmole. Otherwise, I'll have your superiors down on you like a ton of wet concrete. Don't lose your bottle. There is nothing wrong with my bottle. My conscience is clear. Is it? Crystal! Oh, forgive me for saying so, but you must have a very short memory, Mr Daly. May I be allowed to jog it for you? Does two packing cases full of obscene publications ring any bells at all? Obscene publications? Yeah. Two packing cases full. The ones your sidekick has been up in round all morning in a vehicle disguised as a bridal limousine. That is a bridal limousine. Oh. You do admit then to a knowledge of possessing this obscene porn. Oh, they're not all that bad. Bit fruity, yes. Fruity? It's... It's downright degrading, disgusting filth. And you're conveying it not only on the public highways, but parking it outside the House of God. That's not only handling obscene publications daily, it's sacrilege to boot. You're for the eye jump. Look, Mr Ashmore, I can stand a bent copper, but what I can't stomach is when they're holier than thou. All right, all right. What's it going to set me back? Are you trying to bribe a plainclothes officer, Mr Daly? Look, I know you, Ashmole. You know me. Normally, I wouldn't give you a brass filing. Come on. How much am I in stock for? Dealing an obscene porno, Muck. You could get six months. Come off it. Get any of them books in a dozen shops in Soho. Hundred pound fine would be about the worst, and a good solicitor will get me off. Nah, you set me up for this. You nobbled me at a time of maximum embarrassment and inconvenience. All right, fair enough. You win. Justice once. You are trying to bribe me, Mr. Daly. How much? How much you got? Uh, the photographer's finished taking the photographs, Mr. Daly. Oh, I'll be there in just a jiffy, Michael. Just lobbing this gentleman a surcharge for the airfares. Right. I'll be honest with you, Mr Ashmore. I laid out 250 for them books. I'm hoping to unload them for 500. I'll give you two and a half and forget my profit margin. 250 quid to pervert the course of justice? That's all I got on me. I'm not going to haggle with you. It's a take it or leave it job. I'll take it. Listen, he ought to see a quack. He could do with some stitches. You're his medical consultant, are you? Keep your face shut. Dave! Oh, I'm not able to organise a piss up at a brewery. Well, we haven't all got your managerial expertise, have we? Daryl, Trina, you should have gone off in a leading car. You'll be first at the reception, receive the congratulations and the arriving guests. He won't take the time of last He says he's waiting for you. Uh, Mr Daly? Who are you? Relief driver, Mr Daly. Relief driver? Where's my man Terry? Gone on in front. I'm driving you and you, Mr Ashmole. Me? Yeah. Mr Grantley did mention that he'd be obliged if you pop along as well. This motor has been specifically earmarked. Who is this Mr Grantley? And what about the bride and groom? I'd do as he says. Get in, Mr Daly. I wouldn't argue. Who is this Grantley? Is he one of your lot? No chance. Yeah, fine, fine, fine. Fine, fine. fine. Uh, no problems, everyone. Just a slight revisal of our previous itinerary. Now, I shall be journeying in this vehicle with, um, Mr Ashmole. Darrell and Trina, you make your way to the Birkdale rooms in Malcolm's car. 
Oh, beat him all. You came in Malcolm's car, didn't you? Well, do you think you could squeeze in on the way back with uh, one of the bridesmaids and uh, Dot and Cole? Dave, you can get the bus. Uh, has the other bridesmaid any rooted objection to travelling to the Birkdale rooms on the back of Russell's moped? Get in, Mr Daly. Anyway, sort things out best you can. I'll see you at the reception. Lovely. Great. Do you think we can have a smile now? Oi, 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 driver, you're going the wrong way. Birkdale Rooms is in the other direction. Uh, we have to pay a visit first. <coughs> Mr Grantley wants to see us. Who is this Mr Grantley? Who's Mr Grantley? He's a top man, eh? Right, Mr Ashmole? Top man in what? Villainy? Villain? Is that what you called me, Mr Daly? Oh, no, no, I was uh, speaking figuratively. Uh, I mean, speak as you find, didn't it? I call that a case of right boot being on the wrong foot. Think about it, Mr. Daly. You were found to be in possession of property that legally belongs to me. Yeah, but I didn't know they'd been nicked. Did you ask if they'd been nicked? Well, not in so many words, no. No, look, Mr. Grantley, I honestly thought they'd fallen off the back of a lorry. And did you also think that the comics and country lives had jumped up on the back of the lorry? Well, I don't know anything about comics and country lives. It's been tried before. Lorry weighs out at customs, weighs in at the warehouse, the weight's the same. The load's just that little bit different. Yeah, I'm sure there's been a simple misunderstanding. Not a misunderstanding, Mr Daly, a criminal offence. You have the temerity to call me a villain. <laughs> no, it was a slip of the tongue. You're the miscreant, Mr Daly. You're the criminal. I'm the innocent, upright, injured, law-abiding citizen. Is that why you use these tow rags to do your dirty work? Business executives, Mr. McCann. The business world is dog-eat-dog. -dog. It's up to me to ensure that my dogs are big enough to eat and not get eaten. Yeah, well, they must have had terrible difficulties sizing up the opposition when they picked up Reggie. Thou shalt not nick, Mr. McCann, because if thou dost, thou shalt get thy knuckles wrapped. Didn't they teach you that at Sunday school? Didn't anybody ever teach you that knocking out porno magazines doesn't exactly make you whiter than white? There you go, Mr. McCann, like your colleague, Mr. Daly, jumping to conclusions. I do not knock out porno magazines. Don't you? Right boot, wrong foot syndrome again. You knock out porno magazines. My business is whiter than white. Waste paper? I do double in scrap metal, but I'm more of a dilettante in scrap metal. Yeah, put it this way, if I was going on mastermind, waste paper would be my specialised subject. So, all these porno mags are down to you for waste? Right. You're not going to pulp them up. Right again, Mr Daly, I'm not. You're going to pulp them up. I'm going to watch you do it. But look, I don't understand. If you're going to pulp them into waste paper, I mean, why couldn't you make do with the comics and the country lives? Render unto Caesar, Mr Daly. Pardon? Country lives belong to you, the dirty books are mine. To each his own. Do you know what this lot's worth? Not a lot. Over issue, Pam. Five quid a hundred weight. Do, uh, do you get a lot of this coming here? Couple of lorry loads a month. Couple of... Look, Mr Grantley, if you and me done a deal, I could make you a fortune. I've got a fortune. Yeah. Well, you could have another one for a rainy day, couldn't you? Do you know what I could get for these on the open market? About three years with remission for good behaviour. These publications are the property of Her Majesty's Government. Obscene literature, Mr Daly, published on the continent. Confiscated at their port of entry by the Obscene Publication Squad. You and your accomplices were responsible for nicking naughty books that had already been nicked at Dover by the police. You never mentioned that to me. Never knew myself, Arthur. It comes to me on government contract. And have you got a government contract for these two Bob Bully boys to go putting themselves about, eh? It's a hard world, Mr McCann, have an image to preserve. Hey, talking of images, 
Where do you fit in in this jigsaw, Mr Ashmore? I mean, you're not with the obscene publication mob. Mr Ashmore got wind of the fiddle my driver was working. And in his off-duty hours, unbeknown to his superior officers, Mr Ashmore's been working a little fiddle of his own. Yeah, like the 250 green ones he fiddled off me. Mr Ashmore will be towing a straight and narrow line in future beginning now by handing back your two and a half. I have overheads, Mr. Daly. I've had three highly paid executives on this one. They have to have their wages. I hate leaving filth like this around over the weekend. You never know what dirty, evil-minded so-and-so might try to get his hands on it. Gentlemen, shall we make a start? I'm sure we've all got things we want to get away and do. Get in. I, I've told you before, pick on someone your own size. Putting your name on the list? I'm putting my name top of the list. You in or out? In or out of what? Listen, Grantly, I think this is a one-to-one -one situation, don't you? I mean, you don't want your executives mixing it with a copper, do you? Even one as bent as him. Ah, uh, could cause some terrible complications. That's well observed, Mr. McCann. Come on in. You toe rag. Going to believe what happened to us. Only had it nicked, didn't we? Left it for two minutes, went into a little sweet shop, get a packet of mints, came out, there it was gone. I mean, the CID deserve a medal for getting it back quite so quickly. What? Oh, Terry. Ter what, what? He deserves two medals. They, um, they parked it up this cul de sac, see, these yobbos, then made a run for it. Terry goes after a big one, flying tackle, buff. Whoa, Twickenham wasn't in it. Look, are you going to talk all day? Are you going to get them to get with you? No, 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 you are my son. Come on, my darlings. What do you mean, I? Have a lovely time. Put your foot down, my son. You'll make it. I'm going to put my foot down one of these days. Get out of the way. Well, as the poet said, all's well, it ends up all right. Oh, 
Oi, come back here. Oi, 